11,000 years ago, it was snow, and then it melted and it went underground through all these little tiny cracks and crevices and volcanic rock filtration happened. And then we just drilled down and just been sitting down there. It's an aquifer and it's just crazy good. It's probably like the best water in the world, seriously. It's our own special little secret gift. Hey, you want to see the brewery? Yes. I just have all this information that I stole from a bunch of different places and put it together in this way. Most of the barrels are named after people that have passed on and influenced our family and, and they get another life, you know, in a, in a certain sense. So behind me are two very special barrels, Ginny and Irma, we've named them. Originally they came from my previous employer to shoot Brewery as a parting gift. There's a bunch of nice people that wrote well wishes on them and stuff and so I wanted to use them for something special. With the one beer style that we're making here, there's a secret ingredient, uh, Lactobacillus delbrachii, the sour work. Ginny was, uh, my wife's grandma was kind of a sour puss in a good way. What Lactobacillus does, it consumes sugars and produces lactic acid, which is really tasty. The exact same thing you'd find in, say, a sourdough starter. It's the same organism doing kind of the same thing, adding its particular je ne sais quoi. I always want to make sure yeast is in contact with the beer, always, because it's never a bad thing. You know, I'm trying to take the European old world process idea that, you know, the process is really important, but then also the small scale and hands-on type of brewing is kind of more like the colonial American brewer. So I'm bringing water in from underneath. That's gonna allow me to remix this one more time to kind of just get those sugars into solution as much as possible. I have two malts, a malted wheat and a malted barley. The ra I chose those because they're American and I, they're as close to this location as I could possibly get, you know? And so I'm basing this beer on as minimal variation in the raw materials as possible. And so I chose the Cascade Hop to use for everything. You look at the classic beers of the world, like the ones that have been around and stood the test of time and blah, blah, blah. Like for say a, a Czech Pilsner, same for a lot of the Belgian beers. It's not about the amount of different ingredients they can get in there. It's a small amount of some really high quality stuff that they consider the best. One of the reasons I've set this brewery up the way that it is because big breweries fight with the acid a lot because they're on uh, this time schedule, you know? A lot of times they want to get their beer brewed and out the door in bottles in two weeks. And it's hard to get the yeast to to do all you want it to do in that short a time. And so ideally the yeast will have plenty of time to do all it needs to do to kind of fully mature the beer out. Um, we carbonate the product in the bottle. It's all natural CO2. They're based on our initial raw material ingredients and in the main batch that we make and the sour. And um, with Sahaley we're going for, we're, we're trying to achieve a perfect balance of everything with uh, yeast contribution, hop contribution, malt, sour wort, time in the, in the bottle, etc., etc. And a very unique uh, beer that I'm kind of calling a Northwest Berliner Weiss. It's really tart, but it'll have some contributions, quite a bit of contributions from hops and the barrels as well. Limit myself on how many ingredients I can use and then try and make the process as intricate as possible. Each barrel is going to be unique from each other and how we blend them, and what happens in the bottle, all that stuff will contribute to the uh, beer's complexity, its flavor profile. And the idea is then you would have an ageable product that would be able to last time and evolve and change. Mm -hmm.